Good afternoon. Um, I will focus on some things much simpler than all the really, really high-tech things that we have been talking of. I'll focus more on the why part of it and what motivates us to solve these problems. And we'll start with the premise of this part. We, we are fortunate that we are actually born into two countries at the same time. One's called India and the other's called Bharat. And I am mostly going to talk about the solutions for Bharat. Um, firstly, I think there is something, okay, sorry. What I'm trying to say is that data science comes to the rescue when you are trying to program illogic. All the things that more or less were logical or formula driven, yeah, let me do that. Yeah. So mostly what we are trying to say is that all the things that were programmable or formula driven were more or less finished up by the 1990s and 2000s. It's posed that that soft topics like serendipity, chance, luck, uh, these sort of things started making the inroads and these were sort of illogical. And that's what transformed to what we call data science. But that doesn't mean the data science didn't exist and we'll come to that part. Uh, if you look at that aspect on this slide, essentially you're looking at the progression of things that have been happening. Now, the juxtaposing of the compute, the cheapness of resources, and the process of data being accumulated over the last 30, 40 decades is what makes big data a feasible solution today. I would say India has been lucky because we have never had systems. We have never had um, reliability in terms of networks or compute and stuff. So that's the reason we have always relied on big data. If you, if, can someone tell me that what do you think is the first big data application of India? Sorry? Aadhaar. Aadhaar. I think Aadhaar is about 20 years later. <laughs> Indian Railway Reservation System. That was a classic example. At a time when networks did not exist, uh, power was somewhat of a visiting guest. Your computers would go up and down. Things used to work. And an old man would get the lower berth and would get that. The foundation of what you hear of Mangalyan and all those things are again data driven. The fact that we could do a huge data science based approach to do that was there. Our focus has always been when we have been able to make economic use of compute using data sciences. And that's the premise where we are in a great position. Uh, I'll tell you a very anecdotally funny story. When we started Money Control in 96, I literally had to send a peon every day to co collect the bhao copy. There was no feed. There was no FTP services. You had to just send someone physically and get it. From that pedestal, I would say, when I look at all the things that have been happening all around, I think we have come a long way. But that just poses the challenges for the next time. The way we will do it is I will I'll talk briefly of some of the experiences and some of the mistakes we have done more than what we have done, because there is no right way. And we'll take some case studies from the kind of problems we are trying to solve right now. This is a fact known, but let's look at it in some of the other aspects which are not so well thought of. We all know that there have been so many enrollments in Aadhaar and all. The right-hand side is more or less known, but some of the left-hand sides are very important to understand. There has been a 290 million enrollment into Jandhan. There is a 350 million use user base of smartphones now. We are not talking of feature phones. That's the other close to billion now. And we have done about 340 million EKYCs just in the last two years. The acceleration is what is amazing in India. At this scale, so essentially, just to put in perspective, we are more or less EKYCing the population more than the whole population of US in just three years. I think that's the pace at which we are doing. Our numbers are on your side, so-called the demographic dividends. Even if you take out some of the aspects and all, these are all corrected data by the way. We have corrected it for whatever is the number of phone numbers registered. On. Actually, the phone number is more than the population. We are just tipped over to a ratio of more than one to population of India in terms of phone number registered. That's the aspect what drives it. Mass market is all about personalization. Now, that doesn't mean mass market is about writing a billion rules for a billion people. 
it's about giving the right context to each person and sort of giving him the illusion of individualism, whereas you are actually clustering him to a cluster from where you can do it. So predictability is as much his past actions as well as the conjugation of people like him and similar actions. That's what drives our main aspect of data science. That's a real benefit of data science. I don't know you, but I, if I know someone like you and I'm able to match you to a certain degree of confidence, I should be able to predict on that part. The key difference and the difficulty that we face is we are not trained to program for this. We are trained to program for definitiveness, for definitive solutions. Whereas ideally, when you are looking at a data science driven thing, uh, the key aspect becomes that even you who are the maker of the solution would not be able to predict what it would do. But once it's done something, you'd be able to declarify and explain why it did so. That is the singular perspective of data science driven projects. Now this is what we are looking at on that part. This is our postulate. It's the only way to achieve personalization. You cannot achieve personalization except for doing data mining, data sciences. I'm not a big believer in AI. I don't think AI exists still now. I think what we glorify as AI is perspectively data mining and CI at best, cognitive intelligence. AI would be AI when it can define its own problem. As of now, we are defining it, they are solving it. So it's not AI. I agree. This is what we are thinking of as a theme. Visualizing in 3D, which is data-driven decisions. In data-driven decisions, you're broadly talking of two classes. One we would say, which is pretty common, it's been there for the last 15, 20 years at least, uh, decision support systems. And the third is what is a new class. I mean, it's not been named. We, for our working title, you may say, call it intuition augmentation systems. Now, intuition augmentation systems are just observation systems which catch and say, something's funny. I don't know what, but something's funny. I have no known logic for this occurrence. Can you please look at it? That's an augmentative thing to human intuition. And it sort of aids your intuition in focusing you towards the right perspective of problem. Overall, the problems that we are trying to solve is heal. So we call it health, education, agriculture, livelihood. These are the things we are looking at because that's exactly what the next billion Indians need. Not the first 300 million, we are already pampered with our e-commerce sites and things. These are solutions for the truck drivers, for the health workers, for the villagers, for the farmers. I would go on slight generics because most of these projects are being rolled out. There are NDAs in place and stuff like that. We will talk of some two corporates in the passing also. One case study I will take because that's already public domain. Uh, this is what we are looking at is a healthcare system. The idea is it's assisted healthcare, so a paramedic gets trained into some of the perspectives, and when he or she goes, she is aided, or he or she is aided by a doctor who is on the telecall, and is doing, administering tests and all that the doctor advises, and the data then goes and gets crunched, and the doctor is getting the data visual, visual and freelance. He can take his own intuitive augmentation. As well as runtime, the data is getting analyzed to similar processes and doing it. This aids because of telemedicine. This aids hugely when you say a lot of these symptoms are being visible in the last 24 hours in the vicinity. So it could be a pandemic or an epidemic on the offing, and you can stop it better. And it looks at risk patterns and stuff, which actually is going to aid uh, the healthcare insurance parts, which is just in vogue as of now, and no one wants to bite the bullet uh, just because there's no data to do a kind of actuary and science. So now it's all in bulk rate with a lot of caveats, and when the real person gets to claim an insurance, most of the time it's not paid because it's not covered by one of the fine prints. Getting that sort of idiocy out of the way and trying to get some effective means because of data science is what we are trying to do in Epoch. The second one is Mihoop. Mihoop, I'm very proud to say, is one of the top 50 in the world today in the field of AI ML. And Mihoop essentially works on vernacular speech to text. And it's dialect free because it learns and it's resident. At the same time, it happens offline so that it can go into a very small footprint, including the IoT devices and all that you're talking about. 
where the I.O. part of it, the input-output part, which is going to be a problem, is not being looked at. Just as a perspective, all the figures if you look at, it's estimated in the next three years, India will have close to five billion IoT devices, of which 60% would have to be used by people who are not literate. How are they going to interface with the IoT device to derive any value? Or are they going to be robots and some big schema educated person will say, go and do this, and they become chess pieces? So that's the kind of equality that has to be looked at. Why I brought MeHoop and why data science is helping us is very personal as data science. Like I'm a Bengali. If I'm interpreted correctly from a voice sense, it will give wrong results. So if I want to look for Judishthir and you do it proper, you will get the wrong results. The fact that I'm a Bengali and you correct my bias to make it also possible Judishthir will give you the right results. So how you conjugate these things and how you make it for the particular thing is there. So just as a background about, uh, this is what I'm doing for the last two years. Before this, I was a CTO for Just Dial for about 10 years. And I have seen the mass market in terms of voice-based application and where the confidence comes. Now, in terms of searches, only 5% of our searches used to happen on the net. And 5% of the people used to search on the net. They would do 80% of the searches. But 95% of people still felt comfortable calling up, talking to a voice. And I can prove to you that all of you also would make a call someday. It's very easy to understand and to search for a restaurant on Google or on Just or anything. But if your family member tells you to arrange for a puja, you don't know where to start. That's where a human aid helps. So wherever you go out of your circle of confidence, at that point of time, having a human-like aid, being able to talk in natural language, helps a lot. So to cluster that part, you have to do that. This is something I'm very proud of. Uh, we started it as a voluntary project about seven years back. Um, I don't know if you remember the history at that time. Bengal had one of the highest farmer suicide rates. We had Nondi Gram and we had other things. And we as a team of volunteers had just started saying that can we help in any way to cut that down. I would not say that as of now, last year, for whatever reasons, Bengal has had a suicide rate of zero. And we feel that Everything together has helped. And what we do in this is this is public domain. The West Bengal government has actually adopted it. It's called Matir Kotha. This, is, this was actually extensive data science. This is how it works. It, it caters to about 7.2 million farming households. We have analyzed and we have cataloged every square inch of Bengal. Every two hectares, there's a sample taken. That's what we have done for the last two years. And we are aware of the conditional mistakes that happen when sample is taken by government and tested at government labs. These, along with conjugating with satellite information systems, we have arbitrated and corrected, and then done focus sampling with our own team to correct the data. So that we have come into sort of a Bayesian thing that when a government lab says this, actually it's either completely wrong, so it has to be discarded, or it actually means this because there's a there's a bias in the optical spectrometer. Its calibration has gone haywire. And this is a sample lot, so mostly this is a correction. Go and test this sample, and then you sort of correct it with that. With that, we are answering two questions, which again look at a lot of data science, which is what to grow and what fertilizer to use. Just these two questions, how much to use. The biggest scam was in the fertilizers. You go, you are sold a fertilizer, which is three times expensive, four times the quantity. And because fertilizer is something that you subsidized, we started sending it in SMS where the guy cannot have a reputability and say, I didn't know that. I, he told me to give five kilos, so I gave five kilos. I didn't know he needs only one and a half kilos. You're looking at the SMS, you're putting in the code, which is coming to you, how could you not know? So this is the way we have been looking at it, and also it has helped in flood distribution. Some of the screenshots of this is actually something which is used, and it's one of the focus and sort of the fanboy projects of West Bengal government now. Uh, we hope it does good to people, it has done. We, let's hope it doesn't lose steam on that part. It does a lot of these things. Agree loan verification actually is very effectively done in Bengal now, where people pay up within 48 hours, 72 hours, because everything is cataloged and done. And the payouts happen in that time, and we, we have been able to achieve that. Underwriting, actuary and sciences, it aids a lot with this kind of practical data science collection. This is what we use satellites for. This is being tested in AP. We didn't have on-ground people. We didn't, for example, I don't know how to speak Telugu. So of course, I couldn't go there and set up the sample survey process. How do you do it without any intervention, just as a sample? So we use a lot of satellite information and calibrated. And mind you, we, we couldn't afford 
the costly satellite pictures, so we have taken pictures which are at 10 meter resolution given free by all the satellites for educated pipers and we have been able to do this sort of things on that part. This is something that we are doing and this is where I feel that the best company in India um, is data science driven and was always data science driven. Um, and for me, we should not strive to make the Uber of X or Uber of Y. We should try to consolidate and make the Amul of A and Amul of B. Amul was a great science, data science driven project and probably the best corporate thing that has ever happened to India. Getting the Amul model of conglomerating a lot of forces using data science and distributing it to give them the efficiencies of an MNC, but making sure the profit is distributed to everyone is what we are trying to do with Folk, where we are trying to do the manufacturing for textile and other accessories kind of thing as a distributed thing. For the moment, we are doing in Bengal and Bihar only. We will try to spread it all across that part. Um, I guess these are all things that are done. There's a bias of SEO. There's a bias of knowledge. Truth often gets hidden. Um, a lot of things are there. How do you take care of those aspects are things that has to be there. The data-driven decision-making interfaces have to be intuitive. We have to take out the jargon. Today, a data science output is mostly written by a machine for a machine, and it doesn't really make a lot of decision-taking sense to a lot of people. There has to be exemplifiers, and we are probably creating jobs for data scientists in that, but probably we are also reducing the way it's going to be acceptable to the marketing part. That's part that has to be looked at. These are the things that we think will be important for the next billion Indians, and this is our focus area. Looking at natural language processing, identity analytics recognition. So just like you have a, a biological genome, can we create something like a social genome? In lines of what he was talking, but from a more public perspective, conjugating data from sensors, voter IDs, and stuff. I'll just give you an example of one thing, uh, just there very quickly. We are having the charter of building the data science practice from the largest retail chains in, in India. And we are using voter ID list uh, to come up with a very important conclusion as to what to stock in which store. So, because it's India, we know a surname means which ethnicity. And voter IDs have the best error proof uh, tagging of who stays in which location. It's not wrong, it's about 98% correct. So you do a histogram of the surnames, you find out what foods they like, you find out the recipes of the food, presto, you have what you need to stock in the store. So there are a lot of this commonsensical, not so fancy, but very rustic, very down to earth approaches that can make it work. And those are the things which will be interesting to look at. That's a problem on the next billion Indians.